Welcome to Thursday's solo episode. You guys are in for a treat next week because Tuesday is a solo and Thursday is a solo. Now, Tuesday is a longer solo because I recorded it in two parts. It's kind of like my epiphany about the reward and the bribe thing and the reward chart. So it's me talking all about that and why we wanted to implement a reward chart and so on and so forth. And then the second part I recorded after multiple days of using a reward chart system for things like morning, bedtime, bath time, swimming lessons, and I think eating dinner. So I'm proud of that episode and I think I'm going to do more longer solo episodes on Tuesdays every now and then. Just because I like it and this is my show. So today's episode is a Q&A. I put up a question box on Instagram and you guys asked really good questions. So I don't know how long this episode is going to be, but I'm going to try and touch on every single question that you guys asked. Um, Let's get into it because if I don't just get into it, who knows where we will end up, okay? Number one, how did you know you were done like after only having one kid, I'm considering what to do myself. Okay. When it has been up and down for me, my husband is an only child. He has been more clear on being content and happy and our family is done with one child. He never really wavered in that thought. And I don't think either of us really had thoughts. Like I grew up with a sister and a brother. And so I was always like, oh yeah, I'm going to have two or three kids. But then once I had a child and realized what that entails, I was like, no, I'm okay with one. Like one's good. So I struggled with the young years. I feel like it's getting way easier now and much more enjoyable in the day to day. Because Milo's more independent, like you can actually have a conversation with him, like he understands things, like we're doing trick shots all over the place. It's just funner for me, okay? When kids are really young, it's just boring and I'm a busybody and I find like I can't get anything done, I can't do anything, like it's just... I found it very boring and very... Yes, they're cute. There's amazing moments. Like, I'm not a monster, okay? But it was just boring. And I'm a busybody. I can't... It was like having to watch them and like make sure they don't hurt themselves. And it was just not for me. It's also such a different experience just in your day-to-day. Like this morning, you know... I go, I'm getting the school bag and my coffee in the car for the drive to school. Milo gets in the car by himself and buckles himself up. Not everything is like this massive challenge anymore, if that makes sense. So when he was really young, I was like, oh, only one, like I'm happy with just one. And then once things started to get easier, then I would contemplate having a second one. And there were moments where, like there were good spans of time where if my husband was like, okay, let's have another one, like we would have had another one because I was like so sure. But then I would give it a little while and I was like, no, you know what? Like I am so content and happy with just our family unit as it is right now, there have been moments in time where, and it could be the most random moment, like me pushing Milo in the cart in the grocery store and just looking at him and being like, I can't imagine having another child to like divide my attention with or, you know what I mean? Like, I how am I going to give all my attention and love and care and, you know, like effort into two instead of just one, especially two that would be like have a big age gap because obviously younger babies and kids are so demanding and dependent. And I used to think, okay, like we'll get a nanny, like we'll have someone help out and like, yeah, okay, Renee, like we don't even have a babysitter, you know? So 
like now it's more kind of set in stone like we're not having another one but it's really just you're thinking about like what are the reasons and oftentimes it's like I want Milo to have a sibling well there's no guarantee that they're gonna get along like some siblings hate each other and that's just a fact there's like the chance that they'll have medical complications, like that it's going to be a very difficult like pregnancy and very difficult childhood. And like, you never know what's going to happen. And right now everything is so good that it almost makes me nervous to fuck that up. Like, I don't know. It is such a complex, like someone could probably write a book on how do you decide whether or not you're going to have another child. And It's really just like, what is your reason for it? Do you see your family having, like, do you not feel like your family's complete? Like everybody has their own experience in their family. Like I am so content and so, I love our day to day. I love our weekends. I love traveling with Milo. I love doing all the things and even like extracurricular activities I can't imagine having a second child that we have to go do things for and like we have one and some people have like five kids and they're just like doing everything like all the time like I don't like I'm happy right now another thing like my husband and I do everything together like we're the loser parents at swim lessons together when everyone else only has one parent there because the other parents probably at home with other kids or at a different lesson or activity my husband and I do everything together with Milo like unless one of us has something that day but for the most part we do everything together and I don't want that to change either so I don't know it's very complicated and that one question took up a lot of time um moving on Did you ever figure out what to do with that space? I'm assuming you mean the big open space on our main floor that has no functional purpose whatsoever. My mamere had the idea to put in a wall in behind the couch. There's already a bulkhead thing that sticks out there. So I think I want to extend that out and then the couch will have a wall in behind it so you can hang pictures and the living room will be more cozy. Like right now, it's just like one massive main floor wide open. There's no structure to it. It's not functional. There's no built-in storage. I want built-in storage around the TV, mount the TV on the wall, a, um, a closet, like a big deep closet in the wall that we would put in behind the couch. And then, I don't know, make in front of the closet, maybe put like a round area rug with like a little table. Maybe I'll do my puzzles there. Like, I I don't know. Now that Milo's into trick shots, I was like, hey, we should put a ping pong table <laughs> like in the front entrance right as soon as you walk in the door. But we knew that this was an issue with this house when we bought it. But we were like, whatever, we'll figure it out. We'll try and make it functional. So now we just actually have to do that. And we're not handy people. So we need people to do everything for us. But hopefully it's coming. I, In 2024, I would like to get the house set up to be functional. Because some days, probably luteal phase days, I'm just ugh, so frustrated. If you don't have proper storage... It's a nightmare, especially when you have children, because there's just so many things. Um, Somebody said, what is the status on the mini daily episodes you planned to do? Okay, something big is coming on my birthday, which is March 7th. So stay tuned for that. Is it daily episodes? Not so much daily episodes, but something similar. Stay tuned. I can't really tell you what it is but I might have spilled the beans in an insufferable episode or like some episode I swear to god I talked about this on a microphone before but maybe I didn't anyways there's going to be a bunch of fun stuff in one spot coming soon um advice on nighttime potty training okay you have to listen to episode 317 with my husband we did a full episode on potty training at night 
And my husband's a urologist, if you didn't know that. So he goes into all the medical and physical, you know, parts of why potty training at night takes longer than during the day. We talk about how we dealt with that. Um, It is so informative. And the clips that I have posted from that episode, people have been like, wow, you just totally changed my entire perspective on potty training with my kid. So highly recommend. That's episode 317 with my husband. Um, Somebody asked if I've tried happy juice before. No. They said it'll help with poop, sleep, and period issues. I have never even heard of it. Is this just an American thing? I will look it up though, but no, I have not tried it. And I feel like it's probably just an American thing because I've never heard of it. Somebody said, can you do a full video on everything you use for your makeup? I think I've done this before. Like I've made reels before. I will try and find it and repost it. I also think I have one of those, you know, the like to know it things, uh, like the platform where people can share all the products that they use and link clothes and stuff like that. I think I have a folder on my like to know it profile page of all the things like all the makeup products that I use every single day Um, I'm a person that I'm never experimental with makeup I do the exact same thing every single day so I will look for that Um, oh wait did I miss something here let's see celeb crush this is so interesting because I always say I love Shawn Mendes but I don't think I love him in like a crush way maybe I do I don't know Like, it's hard to think about. I love Ryan Reynolds. Love Ryan Reynolds. That is probably what who I would say is my celeb crush. Like, Shawn Mendes is super young and he's like a sensitive little Sally. And yeah, love Ryan Reynolds. I think he would be so fun to hang out with. Dream Vacation. I really, and I talked about this on some episode, but I want to go to one of those places where you have the hut over the water. You always see it on TV and like celebrities go there. It is so incredibly expensive, but not only that, the flight would be a nightmare to get there. It would be like 24 hours of travel. And I just don't know if I have that in me at age 39. I just don't think I have it in me. But I would love if I could just teleport there and plop into one of those little cabanas over the water where the water is so blue. I would love to do that. Um, If we won the lottery and we could move anywhere, where are you going? That's a good question. I feel like I would have a few different places that were not crazy like mansions or anything. I would like just nice condos, maybe one house that's on the water somewhere, like a small house on the water, but then condos in Vancouver, Victoria, BC, New York City, West Hollywood, Toronto, and that's probably it. And then just travel. Like we don't even, you know what? I take that back. We don't even have to have places in all those locations. We can just travel to those locations and Airbnb or whatever, you know, but to actually live somewhere, the my most favorite place I've ever lived was Victoria, BC, but you're kind of secluded from, like, it's very difficult for people to come visit you. It's a pain in the ass for you to go places because you're on an island, but maybe Vancouver. It's a quick flight to LA. I like being near New York too, although I never go there because it's kind of chaos, but maybe Vancouver, I guess. Is that boring? Is that a boring answer? Um, Let's see. Or maybe Werner. We'll go build a little house on my parents' property. <laughs> um... Have you watched Letterkenny and Shorzy? We were just talking about Letterkenny the other day. We used to watch Letterkenny, all of them. And 
we stopped at some point. I don't know why. I feel like sometimes we get into shows. So we watch the seasons and then we catch up and then there's no new season to watch yet. And then we forget about it. So we haven't watched it recently and I don't think I've ever seen Shore Z. But yes, it is based in Sudbury. I think they also filmed most of Letterkenny in Sudbury as well, which is hilarious. Um, classic, just Canadian little shows, you know? Does your mamere really edit those videos she posts or do you help? I do it, obviously. <laughs> Every piece of content I have created for that account, I love creating them. Um, it is so fun to gather footage and content from all our Harry Styles adventures and put it together in fun clips. Um, other than that, she does share uh, just like concert footage and stuff from other accounts. But yeah, I love making those videos. Did your opinion on Taylor Swift change after the Grammys? Mine did a bit. You know what? I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and just assume, like, I imagine that it's extremely difficult to be Taylor Swift, okay? I know people who are, like, just, like, big influencers and I'm like, oh my god, I don't know how you deal with and, like, it's a lot, okay? And these are just, like, regular people. To be on the level that Taylor Swift is on and just the bullshit that she has to deal with and like knowing, not just thinking, but knowing that every single person is watching your every single move at every single moment is nuts. And not only that, but it's going to be recorded and put online and then everyone's going to talk about it. Like, I get it. Okay. I didn't like a few things that she did at the Grammys. I thought it was like, eek, like it made me cringe a little bit. And that's fine. Like, I'm allowed to have opinions of things that people do, you know. Uh, does it mean I don't like her? No. I'm just not blinded. Like, I can see black it and no, I can see gray. Okay. So many people are like, worship certain celebrities and it's like they can do no wrong they like they will never say a bad word or like question something that they did it's impossible to them like no only good that's it and anybody who even questions them you're dead to me like unfollow i'm out of here like you do not support women what are you talking about i just said announcing your album in that one moment was a little bit odd what? But no, I'm tearing down women. Get over it, people. Oh my God. So it made me a little bit more like, oh, like, but again, it's the Grammys. It was like a huge deal. Like she broke that, the record for number of times an artist has won album of the year. There's a lot going on. Like the Super Bowl was coming up. She knows everybody is. I just, I don't know. I can't imagine being in her position. But at the same time, I can still look at it at face value and be like, oh, that was odd. But yeah, I don't know. All I can say is I'm going to be keeping an eye, keeping an eye out, you know, see what, what else happens in the future. But I really like Taylor Swift. Last night, I just wanted the Chiefs to win so that they could celebrate. I was like, oh, I don't want her to have a shitty night and like a grumpy ass, you know, boyfriend. I want them. Woo! Sorry, guys, I just spilled my water. I wanted them to have fun and be able to celebrate and then him go on the Eras tour. And you know what I mean? Like, I just want good things. But it was still odd that she announced her album and was like, I'm going to go backstage and post the album cover. Like, mm, okay. Whatever, guys. Come at me, bro. Uh, 